All right, guys, this is question and answer part two. I'm going to go into some of the questions that was asked, and I'm going to answer them questions. I should have wrote these down, but I never do. So now I got to go off of memory. And of course, whenever you start the camera up, you forget everything that you want to say. Okay, I'm going to start off with this one here. I've been having quite a few people ask me what was the angle of my panels. And to be honest with you, I have no idea what the angle is. I'm going to tell you how I came up with that angle and the reason why I did it the way that I did. Um, it was a guy on YouTube that does solar for these big million dollar yachts for these rich people in their million dollar yachts and he said that he found out that when you the flatter the panel is to the like to the ground flat to the ground the better power it puts out doing overcasted skies so what I did was I I took my panels and I kept adjusting them back and forth, back and forth different times a year. And I did this over the course of maybe maybe middle of summer when the sun was at its highest all the way down to to the fall. And I kept adjusting it and I would measure. I wouldn't, you know know what the angle is whether it's 30 degrees but I would measure it with a tape measure and I would move it and I would keep moving it until the panels would get maximum power and I would write that down and I wish I would have saved that I could have showed y'all what I, what, what I came up with but I didn't save it ended up tossing it after I got it got, got the panel set but basically what I did was I set the panels as high at an angle as I could and started off in the spring, I mean in the in the in the middle of the summer when the sun was at its highest point. And I found out what the maximum angle was uh for for the the summertime at its highest peak. And then in the fall time I kept doing it like once a month till we got into the fall where the sun was at its lowest point. And I found out what the maximum was at the lowest point. And what I did was I tried to go like in between right in the middle. But I kept in mind where he was saying that the flatter you have it, the the, the more it, it, it power you can make on overcasted days. So I tried to keep them as flat as possible, but make as much power to where in the summertime it'll make power and in the wintertime it would make, you know, an average amount of power. And that's how I set my angles. Another thing that people was asking me about was these batteries here. Uh, why I only charged them up to, uh, uh, let me see here. I got my little thing right here. I only take mines up to 57.3, which this is just the scale that I made out. And I use zero as where the Nissan batteries supposed to cut out. Actually, zero here is 40. Uh, 40.7 40 is zero on here. And the reason why I use 40.7 was my inverter cuts off at 40. So I made 40 zero because that's where my battery, that's where my inverter shuts down when I'm running solely on batteries. It'll shut down at 40 volts. So I made that zero and then I calculated all the way up to 100. So I can know not where the batteries are, but where I am as far as my unit shutting down. If I'm 50% from it shutting down or if I'm 30% or 25 or 20 and I'm going I'm to make a new one out and break this down even further. I got it at, 
I think I might even miss one. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Now, I didn't miss none, but I, I got it in 5 percent. And uh, that's where this 40 came in. That's where my inverter shuts down at. Um, now, keep in mind that the the Nissan Leaf batteries makes its most power between 4.2, which 4.2 is fully charged, but I'm calling 4.1 fully charged, 4.15, but 4.2 is fully charged 100%, and then uh, 3.6, so 3.6 right around in here which about 50 I'm gonna say somewhere between 51 and 52 volts that's where it makes its most power once it gets down I'm gonna say to 49 volts the power really really start losing it it, it, it start dropping really really fast after that so the maximum power is made right around in here between 49 and 58 volts is is where you would want to keep it and I'm I'm I got my inverter right now setting it at, at uh, 45 so actually it's 44 on the inverter where when I got the grid power on it when it hits 44 uh, 44 is down here right here 44 that's 20 percent once it hit 20%, it automatically switch over to the turn the grid on, and then it charges the batteries back up. But I think I'm going to change from 44, and I'm going to move it up here to 49, to where once it hit, might even go to 50. Once it hit around 49 or 50, it'll automatically switch, charge the batteries back up. I don't see no reason to run it down no further than that. And I found out this that when when I when I'm uh, running my batteries, I try to run primarily off of my batteries and only use the grid power as backup. And when I'm running off of my batteries, I always seem to find out that when the power goes off is right when I'm down in here and we lose power. So either I have to really really start conserving on power to the next day or I have to do without power and that's not the reason why I built this system I built this system to have power when we don't have no grid and when we do have grid so what I'm gonna start doing is I'm not gonna take these batteries down past about 50 52 volts I'm gonna try to keep them there maybe 49 volts that way if we do have a power outage and we in the middle of the night we have power outage I still have all the way from 50 all the way down to 40 and I could use that and I can conserve on power and make that last to the next day but that's what I plan on doing is um, changing that where it switches over now another thing that I was asked was it just slipped my mind. I got to talking about this so long I didn't forgot what the other one was. But um Hmm, hold on just a second, I'm gonna pause it. Okay, I got it. What the next thing I was gonna talk about is my inverter. Everyone keep asking me what is the inverter? All I keep putting on there is 5048. I thought 5048, everybody would know what it is, but I see that everyone don't know what a 5048 is. So, it's a LV5048 MPP solar inverter. LV5048 MPP solar inverter. That's what my unit is. These are Nissan Leaf batteries. 
they are in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 parallel and 7 series. So I got 7 batteries in parallel in each one of these stacks. And I got 7 stacks. And that's primarily all my system is and my solar panels. My solar panels is 235 watts, 8 amps, and they are, are um, MX solar panels. I have 18 panels. I have 9 in, in, um, 3 in series and 3 in parallel. On one bank, three in series, three in parallel on another bank. So that's my whole system. Solar panels, inverter, the LV5048 inverter, and these Nissan Leaf batteries. Now these Nissan Leaf batteries are a whole complete battery out of a Nissan Leaf. I didn't get these batteries all at one time. I bought them, I bought like 16 batteries and then I bought 8 batteries and then I just kept buying them. So these batteries are not from the same battery, from the same car I would say. These are all different source batteries from different places. But all of these batteries came from um, Tech Direct Club. Now I had to add one extra battery. Because a Nissan Leaf battery is 48. And I had to have 49 because I was one battery short. Now, another thing that I keep getting asked is how to set up these batteries for different um, in, in different voltages. Well, what you're going to do is each one of these just round them off at, at um, I must just say eight. Each one of these are eight volts. So if you got a 12 volt system, you're going to want to have one, two of these, two of these together. You're going to want to take the positive from this one to the negative for this one. And you use the positive and the negative off of this side over here. That's going to give you 16 volts. Now, you're going to have to find out what your, what your uh, inverter can operate at because I had these batteries here on a 24-volt system. And when I would put uh, four batteries in parallel, it would shut my inverter down because the inverter could only go to 29 volts and this was going to 33 volts so I couldn't charge the batteries fully full fully charged so what I ended up doing is going down to three batteries in there and 25 volts would have these fully charged and three batteries is in series you're gonna go from if this this is your first one this is your second one, this is your third one you're gonna go this will be negative you're going to go from this negative to this positive to this negative. And, that, and then you're going to have uh, a cable coming off of here and a cable coming off of here. This is going to be your positive and this is going to be your negative. And that will give you 24 volts. And what you can do is you can do just like what I'm doing here. You can stack as many as you want in parallel. Infinity. You can stack 100 of these in parallel. But you're going to have to have three stacks of 100. Because you're going to have to do exactly what I'm doing here. Once you get your stacks, and let's say you stack seven just like I did here. You're going to have to start here. This is going to be your negative. This is the positive. This positive is going to go to this negative. Then you're going to have three stacks. This is one. This is two. This is three. So you're going to use this positive and you're going to use this negative. And that's what you're going to take out to your inverter and that will make 24 volts. To where 25 you will be your batteries will be fully charged at like 25 volts but and then you got you got to do the same thing for 36 volt and as you see for 48 volts I'm using seven 
But some some inverters can't take that 58 votes. It only go to 55 votes. And if that's the case, then you have to cut one of these out and you have to do six. So that's how you do it. And that's how you get to where you need to go. And uh, yeah, anything that I missed, I might do a part three to this and we will discuss some more. If I get more people asking more questions, I'll make another video. But I think this video is long enough for now. I'm going to holler at y'all later. And I think I'm going to do another video tonight and put it up. And it's not going to be about solar. It's going to be the reason why I haven't did any videos here lately. It's because I'm going through this thing, this little deal with the appraiser's office. The Wyandau County Appraiser's Office. And I'm going to get more into this. And I'm going to show y'all some things. How dirty this Wyandau County Appraiser's Office is. And I'm going to get into this. Because this really got me ticked off. And what they did is, is wrong. And I'm going to expose their ass. Because they need to be exposed. But I might make this video tonight. Might not. But just keep an eye. That's going to be my next video that I'll put up. All right, guys. Have a good night. See you.